Hi guys, welcome to A Touch of Film. Uh, first off, I'd like to say Happy New Year to all my subscribers, to anyone watching this video. Uh, all the people that watch my videos, uh, Happy New Year. Uh, I'd also like to say thank you for a great year. Um, I passed the 1,000 subscriber threshold and I couldn't have done it without all my subscribers, all the people that watch my video. The, the other YouTubers that have supported me, um, since I first started, without you guys, I just wouldn't have been able to do it. I just thought I'd the mo when I first started, I thought the most subscribers I'd get would be 200, and to reach a thousand is absolutely. I'm just absolutely gobsmacked. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I just cannot thank you enough. Um, this video is my top 20 movies of 2018. Uh, most of you who watch my channels will know that um, I have a passion for East Asian cinema um, but this list will have films which are not East Asian uh, movies from the West uh, as well so yeah let's get started um, at number 20 we have Blank 13 uh, this is directed by Takumi Saito uh, and it stars Lily Frankie uh, this is a film which I knew nothing about going into watch. Um, the story of uh, two brothers who have no relationship with their father. Well, when I say no relationship, uh, they have 13 year blank sp uh, gap where they had no uh, contact with him. And after he dies, we see this funeral where um, we just see these people that have got memories of his their father and sort of reminisce these old stories about him and also we see flashbacks of uh, the previous uh, relations that they've had with their father uh, this was a very charming uh, heartbreaking but funny at the same time movie um, the the scenes at the funeral where they meet some of their father's friends are just so funny um, and brilliantly done. Um, this is, I think it's a young director. Uh, I've not seen any of um, Saito's other movies and I'm excited to see some more really. Uh, Lily Frankie, just a great actor who plays the father and he's really good at playing these uh, lovable rogues really, um, which he plays in this. Uh, at number 19, it is Roma, directed by Alfonso Cuaron. Now, I'm not the biggest uh, Quran fan. <clears throat> I did like, I loved Children of Men. Uh, I wasn't a fan of uh, Gravity. But, um, yeah, this is a good film. Uh, I know it's getting a lot of hype. Um, I do think it's very good. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's not amazing uh, as other people have been talking about it, like being the number one film of the year. Um, I do think it's beautiful. I think it's brilliantly shot. The story is is uh, absolutely wonderful. But at the same time, it's uh, it, it it's not something that I would put in my top ten. But it has made my list. Um, I think the story is uh, really really beautiful. The story of a, a young Mexican maid uh, looking after a middle class family through their problems and her, showing her own problems. Uh, in this movie and I think it's a, it is a beautiful film at number 18 we have Dear X uh, Dear X is directed by Mag Su uh, Su Chin Yen and stars Roy Chu uh, this is a film I knew nothing about going to see uh, it was part of the London East Asian Film Festival uh, the story of a, of a boy who's uh, in the middle of a massive argument between a wife and her late husband's boyfriend uh, who she left him for and they're sort of well the wife is fighting over uh, money that was left to the boyfriend which he can't access because he doesn't have the death certificate um, because he wasn't uh, the next in kid next of kin and um, it's the boy has poor relationship, a poor relationship with his mother, but goes to live with her, his father's boyfriend, but not in a, like a romantic 
relationship with the uh, boyfriend, but more as a, a friendship and to see, was he really a bad person? And we see this study of this character played by um, Roy Chu, uh, who is the boyfriend. And we really see, is he, at the beginning we think, oh, what a bastard, but we grow to love this character. And I think it's a great story. Uh, we see someone who really cares for someone who's terminally ill um, and how a relationship builds. So that is my number 18. Uh, at number 17, we have Zhang Yimou's Shadow, uh, starring Deng Chao. Um, Zhang Yimou is coming off a poor movie, which was The Great Wall. I was excited for that, watching Andy Lau and uh, Matt Damon uh, playing the same movie where they played the same character in Infernal Affairs. Um, very disappointing. But now we have Shadow, uh, which is a kind of return to form for Zhang Yimou. We see his uh, directorial style return to more of what we saw in Hero. Um, he is one of the great auteurs from Hong Kong Chinese cinema. <coughs> And he's someone that really has his own visual style, uh, very similar to Wong Kar Wai in a way, but with his own very beautiful uh, use of colour in this, which is very black, white and grey. Whilst it's not a black and white movie, we see heavily use of black and white, uh, where every scene is in those uh, black, white and grey tones. Um, Absolutely beautiful, a uh, great martial arts movie with a uh, beautiful story of um, a man seeking redemption after losing a, a war, a battle, and uh, uses uh, every way he can to get his redemption. Uh, and that is The Shadow. Uh, at number 16, we have Wes Anderson's Isle of Dogs. Um, a beautiful... Wes Anderson movie uh, of stop frame animation of an Isle of Dogs and uh, a young boy looking for his best friend, uh, a dog. Uh, Wes Anderson has a very distinct style and I think he consistently uses it. He doesn't stray from his own style. Um, he has that whimsical, beautiful uh, elegance in his uh, filming. And I think uh, it's used to, used in this uh, with his also with his love of Asian uh, culture as well. Um, the movie tells the story of a boy who uh, crash lands on this isle where dogs are left to uh, scavenge for food, um, with a really great cast of actors, including Brian Cranston and Lee Schreiber. Um, Funny and just beautiful. Yeah, that is Isle of Dogs, which is my number 16. At number 15, we have Wrath of Silence, uh, directed by Zhan Yukun, starring Jing Wu. Uh, Jing Wu, uh, a brilliant actor. Most people would know him from uh, A Touch of uh, Sin, where he had a phenomenal role in this. Uh, um, this time he plays a head of, well, the lead gangster of a crime syndicate who uh, are involved in some shady business, uh, but the main story is of a villager, uh, an uneducated villager who is unable to communicate because he removed his tongue as a child. Uh, and at this time he's uh, looking for his uh, son and this involves uh, getting involved with gangsters, uh, which have Zhang Wu involved. Um, beautifully told. This film really got me excited uh, at the 2017 BFI Film Festival. Uh, I was unable to see it, but I got a chance to see it after it got a general release in 2018. Absolutely beautiful. Uh, great performances and I really love the sound ed editing in this. I think uh, the sound is just so immersive um, and visually it's a very immersive film. 
and with great performances in, and that is Wrath of Silence. Uh, number 14, we have Mirai, uh, directed by Mamoru Hosoda. <coughs> Hosoda is um, a legend in animation, uh, very much to the, uh, I would put him up there with Miyazaki. He's really shown his craft in uh, recent years. I'm a big fan of Boy and the Beast as well as Wolf Children. I think Wolf Children is a very touching film. And in this, we see a young boy uh, who's just had the birth of his uh, baby sister. He was an only child. Now he has to learn to share and to not be the center of attention anymore, which is something he isn't used to just yet. And we see him meet his future sister as an adult form. Um, and it is just a charming, delightful animation uh, with great uh, animation in there and a really funny story. Um, I absolutely enjoyed it. There are dark elements to this film, but uh, again, a very charming film from a great animator. Um, I do think this will get a very special edition probably from uh, all of the anime in the UK. Um, I know it will probably definitely get one uh, some stunning releases in Asia as well it it was the big uh, anime release of 2018 so I highly recommend it for everyone uh, at number 13 we have micro habitat uh, directed by Jean Gu Wun and stars Isom uh, this is a story of a young lady who is on the brink of uh, very low finances, uh, prices of her cigarettes have gone up, but instead of uh, giving up on her luxuries, she gives up on the essentials and with just the, the, the ability to live on her luxuries, which is her glass of whiskey and her cigarettes. Uh, she, she sees her luxuries as more important than her essentials like her, her bills, uh, her food, uh, and she relies on her friends who put up with accommodation for her so she can still have these luxuries. A charming story, um, very similar to a French style of film. Uh, it's, it's got f uh, French like music to it. Um, the director is a young female director and I, I can't wait to see more of her work. I think Microhabitat is an absolutely uh, beautiful film uh, and I'd, I think it was one of those films that didn't get as much hype as it should have got this year um, around Korean cinema but definitely one to check out guys. At number 12 you have You Were Never Really Here uh, directed by Lynn Ramsey starring Joaquin Phoenix. Uh, Lynn Ramsey a great director. Uh, we need to talk about Kevin was just a masterpiece and I, I think this is a great movie. Uh, Joaquin Phoenix gives a great uh, uh, performance in this as someone suffering from uh, post-traumatic uh, stress disorder. Um, he plays a man sent by wealthy people to look for missing children. In this he looks for a, uh, a I think it's a politician's daughter that's been uh, held ransom and he's tasked for looking for this young girl. Uh, quite, uh, while it's a subtle film, I think the violence in this is quite bloody and gruesome, but it, uh, with the slow pacing, I think it is really done really well. Uh, Lim Ramsey, just a great director, and, and with, with, a direct, uh, with an actor like Joaquin Phoenix, who could pretty much play anyone, uh, I think this gives a standout movie of 2018. At number 11 we have Have a Nice Day uh, directed by Lu Jean. Uh, this was one of uh, the first films I saw of 2018. It did make the festival circuit of 2017. I, I was unfortunate to miss it but caught it early on in the year when it got its general release. Um, a animated movie where the only way I could really describe it is if Pulp Fiction was directed by Zhai Zhang Ke and it was animated. Um, we see this young boy who steals from the mob 
some money to pay for his girlfriend's plastic surgery and at the same time we have uh, the, the mob hiring a hitman to go after him as well as some other scumbags really uh, chasing it as well and people would do anything for this money um, and with just an absolute idiot there holding this money. Um, <coughs> whilst the animation is very simplistic, I think some of it is absolutely beautiful, like the backgrounds and um, the settings are gorgeous. Uh, the, the characters are very simplistic, but um, uh, like in terms of the way they're drawn, I think is uh, not very detailed. Um, the story is just wonderful and is uh, the the only physical media release of it is a an American DVD I hope he gets a blu-ray release um, China like I say is just a, a very hard place to get uh, releases due to censorship laws um, but yeah we need to get a release of that movie definitely um, at number 10 we have Ala Changsu, uh, directed by Song Tai Zha. Uh, this is a Tibetan movie uh, about a woman who's terminally ill, and because of her illness, she does a pilgrimage to a uh, temple to get a sort of a, more of a um, a healing from a, a, a priest, a, a monk, shall I say? Um, and she goes on this pilgrimage with her husband and her son from a previous marriage. And whilst everyone bonds on this uh, pilgrimage, we also see a lot of secrets uh, from all three characters, which um, come come out during this uh, uh, pilgrimage. And it does really make relationships crumble at the same time as building them. Um, absolutely beautifully told. Uh, the cinematography is gorgeous. The setting, uh, seeing the mountains of Tibet, the 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 greenery, the snow is just gorgeous. Uh, you could easily put this film on without watching the movie and just have it as background because it just looks so beautiful. Each each frame is a painting, um, and with the great performances by the lead actress in this, uh, as well as the husband and the um, the the son. Uh, beautiful and to see Tibetan cinema really make uh, a masterpiece like this in 2018 it just gets me excited to hope to see more releases like this from Tibet. At number nine we have Ballad of Buster Suggs uh, directed by the Coen brothers. This is an anthology movie. Uh, something you know we don't really see many uh, anthology movies get released. <coughs> um, uh, some of them, we have seen some great ones like Kwaidan uh, in the past, but this is just something great from the Coen brothers who I don't think they can produce uh, a bad movie. This is beautiful, a story of uh, five, four stories with a great cast of James Franco. Um, you, you also have Liam Neeson in this. Um, uh, with tragic tales set in the Wild West, um, great cinematography, great uh, screen playwriting by the Coen brothers. Uh, just a beautiful film. Uh, the first scene in it, the first section of the film, it just makes you want to watch the rest. I think it's, it's from start to finish a wonderful story. Coen brothers, again, uh, I think this is Netflix's first great movie. Um, can't wait to see more uh, films like this coming from Netflix, uh, which is easy to access and with great directors working for them now. At number eight, uh, we have a film which I just recently reviewed. Uh, it's made a lot of, lot of hype uh, and it is so justified, this hype. Directed by Chinchiro Yuda, uh, it is One Cut of the Dead, uh, it stars Takayuki Hamatsu. Um, yeah, I don't really want to go too much into this movie because it's so easy to spoil it. Uh, it's basically, I'm just going to talk about the first 30 minutes of it, like I did in my review. We have a zombie movie being made in one cut, um, 
it's sort of showing a zombie movie being made whilst at the same time being the, mo the zombie movie itself. Uh, it's sort of got that classic uh, 70s B-movie style to it. Absolutely funny. Um, yeah, and a very smart movie. It's it's one of the highlights of Japanese cinema this year. Um, and I really want to see more from this young director. Uh, if he's producing stuff like this now, wait until he reaches his peak. Uh, this is just absolutely wonderful. It's going to get a third window release in the UK, a special edition. I know there's been some talk about <coughs> Amazon releasing a pirated copy on Prime. Uh, which made headlines uh, again this is good press for this film because this film is absolutely amazing and it's one of those films that needs to be seen uh, to be believed absolutely beautiful at number seven we have Hotel by the River uh, directed by Hong Sang Soo uh, starring Ki Jun Ki Ju Bong and Kim Min Hee um, another Hong Sang Soo movie in my top movies for a year two years in a row i think a director who produces so many movies like he bashes movies out um but he's not like a sausage factory of movies he makes every single movie he makes is just brilliant and the way he makes movies is so different from a lot of directors he writes movies he writes screenplays the day before they're being filmed and I've, uh, for someone to do that and deliver movies at a high standard is phenomenal um, this is a story of a um, a poet who sort of is very depressed he feels he's on is on his last few days of life and he goes to stay in a hotel and he um, invites his two sons there who he's not really had a close relationship with and he's wants to sort of make peace with them uh, to end on a high note for him. Um, the film is done in black and white, but absolutely beautiful. It's done outside on snow a lot. And it just looks really good. Uh, Kim Min Hee is brilliant in this. Um, another great actress to work with, Hong Sang Soo. Um, she was in Handmaiden, if you don't know who, who she is. She was the, the wealthy lady in that. At number six, we have a film that, um, I didn't think it was an actual had general release in 2018. I thought it got released in 2017, but it was really just on the the film festival scene. But it got a, a proper general release in 2018. It is Old Beast, uh, directed by Ji Yang Zhu, and it stars two men. Now, two men usually plays Genghis Khan in movies, but in this, he plays a gambler with a Wife that's terminally ill, um, he has to pay for her medicine, but instead he goes and gambles the money. And to get the money back, he sells um, a camel of his friends that he was supposed to look after. He plays a disgustingly awful character. Um, the film is set in Mongolia and just is, is, is it got a very urban look to it, but it is the cinematography is wonderful <coughs> and two men plays this character so brilliantly um i had never seen him previously to this all i knew that he played a uh, genghis khan in soap operas and other movies um but in this he's really really dastardly he's just so bad <coughs> um okay and at number five we have um 10 Years Japan. Now this was a movie that um, was produced by uh, Hirokazu Kurida um, and it was taken from a idea which Hong Kong did which was 10 Years Hong Kong and now 10 Years Japan is about is is another anthology movie but it has these directors make f little short films which are put together um, and what they how they interpret Japan 10 years from now. Uh, very similar to Black Mirror, if you've ever watched Black Mirror, the Charlie Brooker um, show. Uh, this is sort of uh, 
see shows a very dystopian future for Japan as uh, with the way we relate to social media um, the way we relate to deaf euthanasia and the way uh, there's the ways we raise our children um, the film's very dark um, but absolutely gripping um, and you're just in awe of how these stories are told I think it's uh, very eye-opening and uh, you could really it does open your mind to uh, the way we see our future lives right now and uh, the progression into the future if it could really be make technology now is making our lives actually better or worse so that's at number five at number four it is the great buddha plus uh, directed by wang sin yao and it stars chris chung and bamboo chen uh, this was a film I reviewed uh, this year as well. I really hype this movie. I think it is one of the best Taiwanese movies uh, I've seen in a long time. Um, the story of two bored men who sort of gain entertainment from looking at one of their bosses' uh, dash cams and seeing what a seedy life he has and just seeing it as a soap opera till they uncover some dark dark uh, secrets that their their boss has um, wonderfully told movies and a, a movie in a really nice black and white uh, style to it is very dark um, and it, it, the characters are just so funny um, again a black comedy and um, yeah I highly recommend it for anyone to watch um, and that is number four the great Buddha plus <coughs> next up at number three we have an elephant sitting still uh, directed by Hu Bo starring Zhang Yu um, this was Hu Bo's first and final film um, just before the release of it he uh, took his own life um, I've been I've read that it has something to do with the stress he was under with the produ uh, with arguments with the producer due to this film uh, the production of it um, it is like a four hour film and I think the producers were sort of like against that um, story of four characters who in one day they have this really build up of uh, their problems that have put a sort of halt to their lives so uh, what they do is uh, take a complete break and go to this town where there's a zoo in which they've heard of an elephant that just is completely dormant he doesn't move he doesn't do anything he just sits still and uh, th though this film sounds boring it is absolutely uh, wonderfully shot uh, and it shows a, a very different life to people um, in this part of the world um, with economic issues um, family issues and and due to circumstance how people uh, struggle in their lives um, a absolutely eye-opening movie definitely one to see um, and I really hope this film does get a general release for more people to see because it is a very touching film and a shame that this director would never get to do another film again um, because he's he's a brilliant filmmaker uh, really upsetting to see um, so yeah uh, that is my number three an elephant that's sitting still uh, at number two we have um, Hirokazu Kurida's Shoplifters uh, this one stars Lily Frankie and Sakura Ando I know people probably surprised for me not to put this at my number one um, not, not taking any away from this film um, <coughs> uh, Hiro K Kazu Kurida, probably one of the greatest humanist directors there is, uh, if not the best. Uh, humanism directing is one of the hardest uh, way genres to direct, but he does this brilliantly. Uh, the story of a family of misfits, uh, shoplifters, um, people that would do anything to earn a buck. Uh, in their lives uh, that bond together to produce a wonderful family which we later on to see has some dark 
Dark Secrets. Um, I think a absolute masterpiece. Uh, giving one of the final uh, performances by Kieran Kiki in this as well. Uh, Shoplifters, it won the Palm Door. There's nothing bad you can really say about it. It is an absolute masterpiece. Um, and Hirokazu Kurida, he's one of the best Asian directors at the moment. Uh, but yeah, this film I probably put... Now, the film I put at my number one is probably due to my own preference. I love this film. It was absolutely perfect in my eyes. <coughs> and, an, and it w is a masterpiece from a director who hasn't really directed that many films in recent years. His last film is Poetry. As you can guess, it is uh, Burning by Lee Chang Dong, uh, starring Yu A In and Steven Yeun. Uh, now this movie, phew, it blew me away. The story of uh, Yu A In's character, he has a relationship, uh, a romance with a girl that he used to know uh, in school in his old town and this budding relationship is uh, hit with lightning when a third party is involved played by Steven Yeun and we have this love triangle but this love triangle really takes a drastic step into the unknown into a very dark scape um, with some dark secrets from Steven Yeun who I think he plays this pretty well um, now, Lee Chang Dong, he's one of the greatest Korean directors. Not many people know him in the mainstream. More uh, cinephiles would know him. I know most people know Kim, uh, Kim Ji Woon and Park Chan Wook, but he is one of the great directors um, that we don't really see his work as often as we should. Um, I, I think he's. It, absolutely amazing and I, I, a lot of people are saying this should have won the Palm Door at the Cannes Film Festival um, it is up f it has been shortlisted um, for the best foreign language film at the Oscars though I think Shoplifters will probably win it um, I do think this is a better film um, a great thriller um, and with great cinematography great uh, script writing and great performances uh, I can't recommend this film enough. I did do a review of this. I don't want to really want to go too much into it because I could easily spoil this film for anyone. But that is Burning, which is my number one film of 2018 um, by Lee Chang Dong. Um, yeah, guys, check it out if you can. So, guys, thanks very much for watching my top movies of 2018. I will be doing a top Blu-ray releases of 2018 as well. <coughs> But yeah, um, a wonderful year for cinema. I think Chinese cinema has really been the, the pinnacle of excellence and it keeps getting better. Whilst Korean cinema has had a lot of misses in the last couple of years, since 2016, which was one of the best years for Korean cinema, I think it's sort of taking a, a dive at the moment due to, I think, mass production. Even though my number one film is Korean, um, I think the mainstream really needs to sort of sort itself out at the moment. Uh, but Chinese cinema is doing really well. Japanese cinema is consistently good. But yeah, guys, that's my 2018. Um, please comment below. Tell me what your favourite movie was of the of 2018. Um, if you're a YouTuber, put your link to your video in there down below. Let everyone see different movies. It's good to see other people's views, other people, what films that you may not have seen of 2018 that other people have. Um, it's really cool that we can build a community. Uh, please click like, please subscribe below to check out my next videos, uh, hit that bell button and I will see you in the next video guys. Take it easy.